Hi folks, welcome back to Chrono Cross. Simon here, as usual, to guide you through the adventure. And we finished off on the, well, during the last episode, on the ship, the SS Zelbes, and we're going to be continuing on from here today. So, before we go ahead and leave this ship and move on to our next destination, I do just want to recruit a party member that we don't yet have. Now, in order to do this, we're going to make our way over to the casino area, and there we should find Sneff. Now, there are actually two party members we can recruit, but we're not quite ready to recruit the second. But I'm hopefully going to be doing that today as well, once we've done a little bit of prep for it. Anyway, let's not run ahead of ourselves. Let's head into the casino, and there's a scene here involving Sneff. And, yep, yeah, because of the events of the last episode, Sneff is doing very well now. So he is very happy. And off he goes. Now, in order to actually get him into the party, there's another scene we need to watch first. So let's head back down into the lower decks here. We want to make our way over to the theatre. Well, not the theatre itself, which is through here, but the backstage area. And here there will be that other scene. So, yep, yeah, Sneffy has paid his debts and he's ready to move on to bigger and better things in life. And off go the crew, leaving Sneff to join us. So let's select that option. We're not going to have him in the party, but he's on the repertoire. So the second party member I mentioned, also optional, is located in the Grand Slam. Now the Grand Slam is an interesting place with a bit of a mini game involving monster fighting. But I want to try and get some decent monsters, or we're not going to have a good time uh, there if we went right now. And it effectively, for now anyway, involves Sprig. There are other ways to recruit monsters so that you can fight with them in the Grand Slam. But our only option at the moment is by using Sprig to recruit them. We're going to explain how that works. But for now, let's go ahead and leave the ship. So to do that, we need to make our way back to our own boat. And that's, of course, from the outside area. So let's just use turbo mode since we know where that is. And as we're making our way there, I'm going to turn it off because I just bump into things all over the place. I am just going to say thank you to everybody for watching so far. Yeah, I've been enjoying this playthrough. It's nice to do a more traditional series rather than live streams. And I'm enjoying the live streams as well that I'm doing. But for this game, I think uh, a general uploaded video series has been the better approach slight change of plan i was heading to mount pyre to capture the cat burglar enemy it turns out i've already got it along with every other creature that we are going to need to get through the grand slam mini game so the way this works is we are going to be pitting our monsters against the monsters of the opponent and this is going to take place over three rounds so I'm just going to explain how this works. Sprig has an ability called Doppelganger. When Sprig kills an enemy in battle, she gets the killing blow. With a physical attack or an elemental attack, it doesn't matter. That enemy will be added to her Doppelganger ability. Now, for some strange reason, and I don't understand why, the enemies that have been added to Sprig's Doppelganger are the enemies we also get to select from here in the Grand Slam. You see? So we need to choose three enemies, three different enemies for each of the three rounds to face off against the opposing team of enemies. Now, 
I was going to get the Cat Burglar for Mount Pyre, as I mentioned, but I've already got it, as you can see. The other enemies, or sorry, the other monsters we're going to be using here are the Wraith, which you can get from the Shadow Forest in the Homeworld if you don't have it. Just make sure Sprig gets the Killing Blow on one. Snip Goblin and Snob Goblin, which you can both get from the Hydra Marshes, also in the Homeworld. The Lagoonate and the Crossbones and Bulb, I believe, are all default creatures, which you should already have on the list. The Cat Burglar, of course, Mount Pyre. The Gobbledygook, I believe, is also default. And the Total Chaos, we got once we first recruited Sprig back in the alternate dimension after first taking control of Lynx. So hopefully you got one of those, since you would have faced off against a few with Sprig in the party. We're going to start off with the Snip Goblin, the Snob Goblin, and the Wraith, which is already in the party. Okay, the ones that are listed in red here, the ones that are in the active party. Now, this first fight is a bit of a tricky one and does involve quite a bit of RNG. You can, of course, just put on the, um, uh, you know, the battle enhancement if you want to make things easier here. But I'll try and show you how you can do it without using that. However, if RNG doesn't work in our favour, I might just speed things up with it. So we're going to use Snip Goblin and Snob Goblin, first of all, to take out the Bleeb enemy which is a fairly easy enemy. And you can just go for attack level 3 straight away. Right, charge. This is going to one-shot one of our enemies. If it hits the Wraith, we need to run away because we can't win this fight with Wraith being dead. So, yeah, just choose the runaway option. This is part of the RNG, annoyingly. Let's put turbo mode on. So we're just going to go straight back into the fight. Oh, we do need to just sort out the team each time, which is kind of annoying, actually. So let's put Snib Goblin and Snob Goblin back in. You can also use Crossbones instead of Wraith. It doesn't really make any difference. Uh, whichever one we don't use here, we're going to be using in round two anyway. So, once again, let's try and take out B, bleed, whatever it's called, with a few level three attacks. And hopefully the charge won't hit Wraith this time. This isn't the only bit of RNG to get us through this fight that we need in our favour, annoyingly. Let's just go for rank 2, because that should kill it. No, it didn't. Okay, please don't hit Wraith. I'll tell you what, it's just going to be one of those days, isn't it? It really is just going to be one of those days. Somehow Wraith survived. I have no idea how that happened, but let's see if we can still get through this fight. Get rid of that one. And then we're going to start our physical attacks on the pink thing. The Gloob. Right, here we go. Wraith. So we're going to focus physical attacks on the pink thing, as I said. Please don't kill... Oh, don't believe it. I'm going to try one more time. And if it doesn't work, I'll just go for the uh, time-saving option of using the battle enhancement. Oh, I've used the wrong enemy, the wrong creatures. Sometimes... This game hates me. Sometimes my own boominess hates me as well. Don't know if boominess is a word, but it is now. Okay, right, let's try and do this right one last time. So, Snip Goblin, Snob Goblin, and Wraith. If I can at least show you how to do it, I'd appreciate that without getting the Wraith killed before it even gets its turn off. Okay, so we want to kill B, B, but that's what it's called. I kept calling it Bleeb, Beep. Basically everything that it wasn't actually officially named. Well, you leave our Wraith alone, please. Yeah, that's down. Perfect. Now we're going to get in charge. Why does it always do this? You won't believe I actually did this fight in practice before recording. How typical. <sighs> Flipping neck. Okay, right. I've had enough of that. I'm just going to show you the strategy, but with um, the battle enhancements on. Let's put that on. Just for the sake of time, are we going to be here all day, me trying to show this strategy to you? It does work. Trust me, it does work. I even got it to work. 
But like I say, now that I'm recording, it just doesn't want to do it. So we kill uh, the Bleber. Bieber. Still can't remember the name. It's not going to stay alive long enough to matter. Okay, that would normally kill Snob Goblin, which is absolutely fine. And then... Oh, we're still on Snob Goblin. Okay. Well, the trick is we use an ability called Hell Soul with Wraith. So we get Wraith to do one attack times two. And then we use Hellbound. And we use Hellbound on the Torminator. Fitting name. Looks like it's gone. Or not. Because it didn't get a miss. I just don't know why the enemy's still there. I'm confused. Uh, yeah, normally if it doesn't work, it will say miss. I don't know. Maybe that's something weird to do with the... Um, remastered version. Because they have changed some of the effects and stuff, haven't they? Inexplicably. I'm not sure why that is. But we can't do it again because we can only cast it once per fight, of course. Yeah, that's really weird. I don't get that. It didn't say miss. Oh, well. <sighs> Let's just get through the fight as quickly as we can. Hopefully that explains the strategy. This creature shouldn't be here. But that's what these enhancements are for. Just get us right through it. Okay, weakened state. Okay, let's see if I can show you the next battle without using the battle enhancements. Right, so for this one, we're going to be using... We can use Beach Bum or Bulb. I don't think it really makes any difference. They're just there to, to die, basically. Just to take some damage and to tank a little bit from our other enemies. Aside from our other monsters. Uh, oops, didn't mean to do that, but that's fine. Right, let's go for Crossbones, Bulb, and finally... Get rid of Mama Dingo and put Lagunate in. So Lagonate's going to be our friend here. And also Crossbones for the Household ability. Okay. So let's start on the weak enemy again with some single target attacks. Try not to get Crossbones destroyed here. Uh, I think one more yet. And now if we go to elements. Ah. Oh, still need to do another one. Let's go for attack times two then. Get to level four. That's better. Household. We don't want to household gobbledygook. Uh, we want to try and household... Uh, Spearfisher. Spearfisher is really annoying. As you're going to find out if we miss... We did. See how that said miss then? Maybe I, I didn't catch it when it said it on the previous round. Hopefully Bulb will be the main focus for the enemies. What elements has Bulb got? Bush Basher. Okay. Yeah, Lagonate is quite strong as well doesn't have like a, an instant remove ability such as house soul but it does have some nice abilities that we might want to make use of let's go for attack three look at that 370 points of damage 
Aqua Ball. Not too exciting, but it's something. Uh, just for kicks, should we try this, shall we? Yeah, not too bad. If we can try and focus down the spear fisher now. Uh, Lagonate also has a ton of HP, which is just beautiful for these sorts of fights. It really is. Bulb again, fairly useless. Okay, and let's keep hitting with level 3s for some high damage. Nice, Spearfish is gone. I'm actually going to do this one without using the battle enhancements. Hopefully so. Thanks to Lagonate's awesome physical attacks, even though Hell Soul completely missed. Okay, this is pretty, pretty mean. But didn't take Lagonate out, so that's important. Hopefully we shouldn't miss here with our 99% attacks. Uh, should try Carnivore. Nice bit of damage. But I do need to build up some stamina again now, which is kind of irritating because I don't think this thing's even in its weakened state yet. Okay, we can defend to build up stamina quite quickly. See? Die! Oh, it's dead. Brilliant. Okay, so that's round two. That wasn't too bad, actually. We got that first time. And we get the resistance belt for our trouble. Now, the next one could be a little tough. Um, we're going to be down to Cat Burglar. And we're going to use Gobbledygook. And then finally, we're going to use Total Chaos. Now, Total Chaos should be the MVP here. Again, there is going to be a one-shot ability that we need to try and avoid, especially on Total Chaos. Um, right, who should we focus down first? I don't think it matters too much. Let's just punch our way through. Cat Burglar and Total Chaos have a nice bit of HP, but I think Gobbledygook is probably going to go down pretty fast. Uh, let's see. Oh, survived. I was not expecting that. Uh, any elements worth casting here? Uh, probably not, to be honest with you. suppose we could do a bit of weaken before it dies. Let's get a debuff going. Okay. Right. This is where the fun begins, hopefully. Doesn't always work. Please don't miss. Uh-oh, power dive is bad. Phew, we survived. Uh, we can't cast what I want to cast just yet. So let's keep laying out the damage. Is it level 6? Nope. Okay, this is it. Graviton. Right, this should do a, a really nice amount of damage here for us. Oh, it sucked. That was not what I was expecting at all. That was really not what I was expecting. Um, anything that Cat Burglar's got to help us on our way here. Maybe Triple Fist. Okay, let's try it. Let's see if we can kill this airframe. Okay, not actually as good as... Well, let's defend. If we defend, we might get stamina back up again. There we go. And we get a graviton. Lovely stuff.
Um, if we survive, which we won't, I was going to see if Total Chaos had another ability. Okay, let's run away because it's all going to pot here. You don't want to lose. You really don't want to lose. Oh, crud. Why do I keep doing that? Why do I keep doing that? Yeah, what I was looking for was that I thought Total Chaos had Black Hole. That's what Google tells me anyway. Is this another one of those stupid nerfs that they've put into this version of the game? Because if it is, it's just doing my head in the way they've done that. I don't know why they would have done that is the thing. Right, Cat Burglar. Um, should we try another enemy? I don't know if there's anything that's any good here. Should we try Drongo? No, let's try, um, let's put Total Chaos in. For Drongo, let's try Dodo. It might have a bit more HP. To survive. We got this from Fossil Valley. I don't think it makes any difference, but it's there, so might as well use it. Yeah, it's got some HP, which could make a bit of a difference. Um, and if we should, yeah, let's go for the middle guy first. How did you? Not gonna ask. Right, Dodo. Well, at least Dodo's doing a touch of damage. Yeah, Power Dive is the nasty one. And will you please leave Total Chaos alone? Right, two. Four. And six. Okay, let me see what elements we've got now. We've got Graviton again, which isn't all that good. Yeah, we don't have Black Hole. Which isn't good. Um, let's try free fall. See if this is any good. See if we can kill this guy. It's minus three, which which is annoying. No, it sucks. Okay, effectively, total chaos is just terrible. Serious nerfs going on there. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. Right, Magma Bomb is plus three, so maybe this will be nice. Not really. Dodo only has Peck. Yeah, we still need to kill Airframe first. That Power Dive is just very strong. Yeah, that one enemy uses the elements that we've used, from what I can tell. Doesn't it? Or elements that we have, maybe. Ah, heck it. I'm just going to put the... Um, put the auto battle on. Just get through the fight. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Can you guys clarify in the comments if you know what's happened to Total Chaos here? Because... Total Chaos is like the one creature you want to get for this fight. And it just seems completely and utterly terrible. Let me just check. I didn't realise it goes to level 8 Total Chaos. It's got a really high elemental grid. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe it does have Black Hole. Just very high level Black Hole. It does. Okay. It's just equipped on a level 8 which I did not realise. Well, you live and learn. So that's the problem. That was me being a boomer again. Yeah, a nice bit of damage there. Yeah, black hole is where it's at. We've done it. Perfect. Yeah, sorry about that. I didn't realise all that time that we had a level 8 grid. Well, we got the dreamer's banana, but... Banana? <laughs> Pantana. <laughs> a dreamer's banana might not have been as impressive. Uh, but more importantly... And the reason why we did this. Oh, we get a trophy. Uh, but also Janice should join our party.
Yep, she wants to know where all these awesome monsters are coming from. Not going to put her in the party. She's fairly useless. But we wanted to add her to the repertoire, of course. Okay, right. So next up, we're going to be heading to Marbule. Once you're done in the Grand Slam, you're going to make your way to the top deck. Now, this is optional what we're going to do now. We're going to start the Saving Marbule side quest. But it's one that I do recommend. So make your way up the mask here. And then we get the permission to traverse this weird device. It's sort of like a lift slash zip line. But it will take us over to Nikki's Magical Dreamer's boat. Which is where we kick things off. We're going to do the first part for now, which is the bit on this boat. But here's the thing. Enter this room here. That'll start the cutscene. Um, like I say, this is an optional side quest, Saving Marbule. But if you don't do it, you're not going to be able to craft the game's best end game equipment later on. Some of the best end game equipment. It's going to be locked off to you. And on top of that, you're not going to gain access to a number of party members either. So, yeah, you get what I'm saying? It's optional, but it's not optional. We're doing it. Now, this first part's very easy. We just hear the plan. And the plan is that Marbule is, uh, you know, has monsters and that that have one weakness. And that's this song that needs to be sung. This demi-human song. Now, we can't sing a demi-human song, but we can distract the monsters whilst more proficient singers are able to do so. And once we've got through the cutscene, everybody here is going to leave, except for one person. Well, apart from our party. Let's just speed their exit. And yep, that's Irene's right here. And she wants to join us. And that's important. You know what? I don't think you have to have Irene's to come continue on with the side quest later but there's really no reason not to and that's what we're going to do for now in terms of the side quest for saving Marbule you can head up there's a room above you can explore but there's not a whole lot to do in there so I'm just going to go ahead now and make my way back to the uh, previous boat and we're going to go ahead and leave back to the world map at this point. So just head back down to the party's boat. And that will allow you to leave this place. For now, you can come back pretty much whenever you wish. And now then, we're finally going to be making our way over to the Dead Sea. So just to confirm, you are going to need the Fiddler Crab, which we got from the Sage. Uh, where is it? There it is. Okay, so, you know, as long as you've got that, you can proceed here. Head over to where the title for the place comes up. And then we're going to go ahead and use that item, the Fiddler Crab. You can use it directly from the boat. Which is helpful because, you know, don't really fancy swimming here. And what do you know? A doorway. Death's Door, to be precise. Bit of a frightful name, if you ask me. But welcome to a new area. We're not actually going to be here all that long. Let's start by speaking to Radius. Okay, and make our way up to the next part of the area. And a sword here, quite reminiscent of Excalibur, one might say. But this is Masamune. Indeed, after all that effort, all that trouble we've gone to to access this dungeon, alas, we cannot proceed any further.
yeah. So, the Masamune is a most evil sword. As such, only a holy sword, Ein Lanza, is able to help us. Right, okay, so we need to go and find this sword which is going to be located by the grave of Garai. Now in order to, before we do that, we need to go and get another item and in order to do that we need to head over to the Hermit's Hideaway. So we have visited the Hermit's Hideaway before which is just over here, that was when we did some optional stuff earlier on. Now we are going here as part of the story. And inside, we're just going to make our way through to Radius's shed. Ah, flashbacks. He's a big lad, isn't he? Tell you what, this Radius guy, he's seen a lot in his life, hasn't he? He really has. <laughs> oh, he's hilarious. Yeah, so Radius is just going to chortle off. Yeah, Radius will return momentarily. And when we interact with him, he should have an item for us. Yeah, Garai's keepsake, that's what we needed. Indeed, we're going to be off to the Isle of the Damned, which will serve as our next dungeon. So I shall leave that for the next episode. Um, I know this hasn't been another 50 minute, but I do need to, to crack on because it's bank holiday. So <laughs> I need to spend some time with the family. I'm sure you guys will understand. But yeah, we'll, we'll pick up next time at the Isle of the Dam. So I hope you guys will join me for that. And I do hope you've enjoyed this episode as well. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to, you know, just follow me over at Twitter maybe if you want to keep notified of future updates with what I'm doing in the world of gaming at Fuzzfinger01. And I'll catch you next time as we continue on with more Chrono Cross. See you then, guys. Take care.